My name is uh, Michel Mumenthaler. I'd like to speak to you over the next 20 minutes about uh, current trends in pharma water solution. And um, I want to give you a quick introduction to myself. So my name is uh, Michel Mumenthal. I'm a Swiss native and uh, I live in London, UK. I work for Austar Europe and uh, H plus C Pharma Limited, which is a joint venture between a traditional um, German uh, purified water manufacturer. And um, I'm the business development director for the European, um, Middle East and North African region. Um, I have previously worked for 15 years in uh, various roles in the pharmaceutical industry, on, including manufacturing and operations management. Previously worked for Sondo Novartis and Christ Water Technologies BWT. Today, we would like to look at um, four parts in my presentation. First of all, we're given a, I'm going to give a, a quick update on the current trends and uh, news in the global standards of uh, especially water for injection generation. Then we are going to look at uh, pharmaceutical water pretreatment uh, steps and then R3 purified water, water for injection, generation, storage and distribution. And I have a last slide which where I've summarized a few points that will no doubt cause discussions over the next few years. So where are we? Our star are able to um, offer full turnkey installations. And I have here um, wanted to show you a typical um, uh, clean utilities installation that is going to um, cover everything from raw water tanks through uh, pretreatment stages to um, and, uh, the purification stages, which are the water systems, storage tanks. Then we have distribution skits. We have then coupled in pure steam generation, water for injection distillation more tanks and more distribution skit. These then also can be extended obviously to liquid processing session, formulation tanks, and uh, basically full facility turnkeys that can be designed, built and implemented and qualified by Austar. We've done it many times and uh, I'll do this as an introduction to the company's profile. So let's start with part number one, um, current trends and global standards. Since 2017, it was newly implemented in the European Pharmacopoeia that nowadays we are also encouraged and allowed to generate water for injection by a purification process that is equivalent to distillation, reverse osmosis, which may be single use or a single pass or double pass coupled with other appropriate techniques such as EDI, ultrafiltration or nanofiltration. It is suitable as long as notice is given to the supervisory authority that you want to use it. Now, water for, for injection generation and ambient temperatures offers many advantages compared to the traditional um, thermal equipment. Basically, CAPEX is only the start. We can generate water for injection basically from one skid, which previously used to be a purified water skid, modified with an ultrafiltration filtration stage. Um, we can qualify that water as water for injection at ambient temperature that takes away extra capex for a still, and also it keeps the running cost much lower than using the traditional multi-effect distillation, vapor compression distillation, etc. So the final treatment step is key here. According to the pharmaceutical uh, Pharmacopeia Europe, then the monograph 9.1, 9 9 we are 
allowed to introduce a final treatment step to a purified water system, electrodeionization, nanofiltration, or ultrafiltration. Now, basically, the ISPE, the International Standard of Pharmaceutical Engineering Agency, of Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, for example, take the view that only an ultrafiltration is suitable for that. Nanofiltration only provides relative removal of, of particles similar to a reverse osmosis. It's not a real barrier. And EDI is the same. So basically the ultrafiltration has got the only real density that we require to call it a full barrier. I would like to just quickly um, focus on the um, different pharmacopoeias. We got the Japanese one, the United States one, and the European one. And they all basically require the same electrical conductivity, which is one same or similar or less than 1.3 um, microsiemens per centimeter. However, it is now aligned because the production method is now also for all three similarized by distillation or a production process that is equivalent or superior to distillation. I just wanted to show you this quickly. Uh, basically, all the all the all the um, factors are very well aligned now. We have a case study quickly to share with you. So our start did a modification to a purified water system in South America. The customers the customer required water for injection at ambient temperature. The water for injection was not required to be distributed at 85 degrees. It was a rinsing process. It was okay to have it at um, ambient temperature. So we have modified the existing purified water system with an ultrafiltration stage, which you can see a picture here. And the water that's basically coming out and is fed forward into the distribution loop could be successfully qualified to have water for inch qualities. And basically all we've done here is um, we've fed the ultrafiltration from a purified water loop and the water that resulted, the filtrate from the ultrafiltration was then designated as water for injection and further distributed. The customer is very happy with this. Let's look at our second part, which is the pharmaceutical water pretreatment. So, purified water should be, per definition, generated from water that has drinking water standards, if we're not wanting to implement more customized pretreatment steps. So, I just wanted to quickly show you this that the different regulating authorities um, qualify drinking water in a similar way, not quite everywhere the same. However, the characteristics of potable water vary a little bit on the source. So basically seasonal changes will impact your water. So we can only really have common requirements that, that form the basis of drinking water standards. That is, for example, a bacterial contamination between 500 and 100 CFU per milliliter, no coliform bacteria. The pH has to be in around seven to nine. Total dissolved solids have to be below 500 parts per million. And there is also various different limits for specific pesticides and organic materials, etc. However, if we can take water in this sort of quality, our standard pretreatment steps will do the job. So the good design consideration for that would be, so basically we would always like to recycle water. We never want water to stand still. That is one of the key design considerations and good manufacturing practice points of our water system. 
The next one is the cooling temperature. We have to get, we have to have the incoming water a little bit under control. Therefore, we would introduce um, incoming raw water coolers and uh, in order to temperize the water in around 20 degrees before it enters the pretreatment stages. The same goes for hot water sanitization. Some pre some pretreatment stations or some some customers require even their purified water pretreatment to be hot water sanitizable. We can offer this, of course, with uh, um, um, a plate and frame heater up front and um, 304 steel vessels. It is a little bit of a cost impact compared to the uh, standard plastic pretreatment. However, if it's required, it's an option. Sanitary columns and sample points, everything has to be drainable, everything has to be uh, documented right, is another key factor. And we further go to a quick input on the ultrafiltration skits. So this is an example of our um, ultrafiltration skit as a pretreatment step. Basically, the um, the um, if if we have a silt density index, which is basically the, the sluicing um, in the raw water, which cannot be removed through the through um, um, general steps like uh, softening and uh, active carbon, etc. Only a multimedia filter will also be limited at some point. We propose ultrafiltration in order to bring high silt density indexes down to less than three, which is generally what it has to be in order to um, generate pretreated water. This is a general softening plan. You can see on the schematic below that there is options to um, um, hot water sanitize this, obviously. There's a full recirculation and also they're running in, in a parallel, basically while one is on full duty, the other one's regenerating, or, or there is the other way, which is um, serious, where one is taking the full brunt and the second one is basically just polishing. So quick um, look at an example. This is a typical purified water plant room where we have the uh, pretreatment skid, a uh, purified water skid, and a that feeds into a tank where we then have a distribution skid that feeds onto a pure steam generator and the multi effect still, which again the WFI goes into a tank and moves through the factory ring main with its user points. Let's just quickly look at that. Um, so, for the these are examples for. Um, the different skits that we are in general or uh, traditionally being operating. So we basically have a, a raw water pre treatment station, which could be an ultra filtration. We have a softening plant. We have the generation of the purified water and highly purified water. This step could in the future now be modified with an ultra filtration stage to basically produce water for injection already here. So the whole multi-effect still and the tank and the extra distribution skid from, for water for injection would be um, neglected. Distribution skids, I'm coming to that in a minute, have a um, advantages. There's two different ways. Let's have a quick look. I have listed the different equipment ranges from Allstar and H plus E. We have the water and steam generation systems, basically. We have the distribution systems and we offer a wide range of services. So basically, distribution systems are the very similar technology, the standardized plug and play skits, which either are distributing W5 or purified water, and we then have the loops. We offer full turnkey loop design and engineering and uh, installation with our partners and our own teams, depending on the location. Then the pure steam headers, we also 
design with the, according to customer's requirement. The, basically, we can offer the, the full services that are required in order to deliver a turnkey job. A quick overview over our product range. Um, we have spoken, we have seen the Ultralist, which is our ultrafiltration skit for pretreatment, several versions of softening plants, hot water sanitizable or not, hot water generation systems, um, which are also modifiable to be called WFI generation systems. We have fully hot water sanitizable pretreatment skits. So basically what we can offer is we can offer you a um, purified water or cold WFI plant integrating all the pretreatment skits except the water filtration on one skit. The sunny circle skits are our distribution skits, basically. It's, um, it's, it offers a couple options one of them being um, ozonization of your storage tank and periodical ozonization of your loop and distribution skit. Or the, on the other hand, we can also offer that uh, equipped with double tube sheet heaters, coolers, if the hot water sanitizable um, sanitization method is preferred. CIP skits to go with it all is the standard, uh, standard in our range. We have our partners, there is Finacqua, who we have a partnership with, are obviously a very renowned and very successful supplier of um, WFI stills and Kirstein generators. They, I believe, we all know and we have all seen them. They, there's, there is nothing to say about their quality. They're second to none. And then basically we also offer from our same factories any solution preparation systems that you might require so let's go on to um water for injection storage and distribution and uh, generation systems so basically our standard system would consist of a um, high pressure pump after the water has been pre-treatment the water pressure speed will be raised to well, around 10 bars and fed through um, oral stages, reverse osmosis stages with the membrane filtration. Then at the exit of the, of the oral stage, um, we have the option to include membrane degassing systems in order to get rid of all the CO2 that's still in the water because pretreatment does not necessarily get rid of the CO2. And then we have our continuous electro-ionization polishing step which removes the last five percent of impurities after that we have purified water however as spoken before all we will remind all that we will require is a um water filtration polishing stage in order to qualify that water as water for injection so generally purified water quality after the edi is is we can promise you it's going to be lower than 0 0.5 but more realistically it's going to be 0 0.05 however because the pharmacopoeias this uh, define those water qualities at user point at 1.3 1.1 micro siemens per centimeters it is not really um very let's say helpful to qualify water at outlet of the generation system because once it's in the storage tank and gone through the factory through the user points the quality has um, decreased a bit that was um, our um, fi finishing slide for the full plant room so basically which is the preferred method to produce WFI nowadays Distillation is still used by the majority of pharmaceutical manufacturing companies, but we obviously hope that by showing the customers the advantages of RO, EDIs, and UF combination in order to generate cold WFI, we might be able to um, see more customers change direction and go on to that kind of um, 
let's say, a little bit more economical way of producing WFI. That is just to show you again, all we really do in order to generate P uh, called WFI is add an ultrafiltration stage. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Michelle. Hello. Hi, Michelle. Yes, hello. Yeah, please check your chat for the question from the viewer. Yes, thank you. That's fine. I am actually. I am. I am through. We can. Uh, we can take questions. I have sent you in your chat box. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just a second. Okay. So. Yes. Um, well, so basically, how well the, the ultra filtration is just got uh, uh, it's got. Hello. Yes. Sorry. The ultra filtration has got a dense enough um, pority in order to remove the endotoxins. Um, why only the ultra filtration is qualified for removal of endotoxin? I mean, that is, the, we, I think we had the best results with it. Would you, would, what other methods would you have considered, if I may ask? Uh, 